Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. Today we're in Isaiah. We continue our verse by verse study through the whole Bible. We come today to Isaiah chapter 55, verse 1. So get your Bible as always. Open it up to Isaiah chapter 55 today. We'll begin in just a minute. Quick reminder to you that the Scripture Verse by Verse website is a place where you can listen to all the archives, 33 years of my teaching saved for you at the BibleVerseByVerse.com. This is the fourth series going through the entire Bible. Three of them are complete. This one is getting pretty close. Um, <clears throat> and you can choose either one of those series by clicking and then choosing the book of the Bible and then the chapter and the section. And all you need to bring is your Bible and a hunger for God's Word. And you are all set at the BibleVerseByVerse.com. And Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your Word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Isaiah 55, verse 1. Ho, everyone that thirst, come to the waters. And he that hath no money, come. Buy and eat, yea, come, buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Why do ye spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfies not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. The word of God taken in by a hungry soul, will satisfy like a good home-cooked meal. Satisfaction, guaranteed, without any calories, but it sure will fill your soul. Three, incline your ear and come unto me. Hear, and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you even the sure mercies of David. God says, if you want to live, I mean really live, then hear me and obey me. You know, Jesus said that he came to give life and life abundantly. The best life is the life that is lived for Jesus in holiness and in fellowship with our Savior. Verse 4, Behold, I have given him for a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander to the peoples. David was God's witness to the world. His godly leadership would lead to blessing, which would lead to an opportunity to tell everyone how great God is. And then, of course, David would always give God the credit. Verse 5, Behold, Thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God, and for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. When Christians live righteously, God puts himself on display through them, and as a result, the righteous, those who hunger for truth and holiness, will be drawn not just to God's people, but to the God that is empowering them and is filling them with holiness. Six. And, and I've got to say this. I mean, those who will be drawn to people, those who are drawn to the truth and, and true biblical holiness and a complete dedication to Jesus Christ will never be in the majority. Jesus has already told us that. But it doesn't matter. For the sake that are hungry, for the sake of that remnant, it is up to me to teach the pure word of God without watering it down. It is up to you and I to live holy so that we may draw, we have something to offer those people, that remnant, a place for them to go, a place to hear the word of God and some people to fellowship with, hopefully. Verse 6. 
Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. You know, God is not a long way from you, from anyone. Actually, he is so close <clears throat> that if you whisper a prayer, he will hear. In fact, you just move your lips. You don't even have to move your lips. Just think a prayer. He's so close to you that if you just think a prayer, he's going to hear. That's how close he is to you. And that's the way it is now. That's the way it is right now. But it won't be that way forever. I'm talking to the unsaved. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Ten seconds from now, it might not be that way anymore. You can utter a prayer and he won't hear you. Ten seconds from now, it may be too late. You may be dead. And if you are, without Christ, you're in hell. And then forget it. It's all over. No more hearing prayers. No more caring. You've sealed your doom. Seven, let the wicked forsake his way. And the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Repentance is necessary for salvation. I say it again. <clears throat> I've said it many times. Repentance is necessary for salvation. Repentance is turning from your sin and turning to Jesus Christ to make him your Lord and to ask him to save you and forgive you. That is is full-blown 100% repentance and it's necessary for salvation if we want God's pity and we want God's forgiveness then we must be willing to give up the bad way that we live eight for my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are your ways my ways saith the Lord you know we can come up with a, a great idea and then plan how it's all going to work out. But just because we think it's right doesn't mean that God thinks it's right. And if he doesn't think it's right, then it's not going to happen. <clears throat> Verse 9, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. God's plans are more wonderful, more wonderful than ours. Even our long-term plans plans are short-term compared to his. His plans cover all the bases and do what is best for us in the long run. Verse 10, For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not there, but watereth the earth and maketh bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Rain and snow fall from the sky, but they do not evaporate back into the clouds until they first water the ground and help the crops to grow. Verse 11, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Isn't that a wonderful verse? And I just love that. That's why I teach the Word of God, one of the reasons. Because it's filled with Holy Spirit power and energy. And when you speak it clearly, you don't have to do anything. I don't have to talk anybody into, do, into believing it, into applying it. I don't do it. I don't try to do it. I never argue the Word of God. I never debate the Word of God. I teach the Word of God. And I let it do its work because it doesn't come back void. God's word is like rain. God's word does not return to him without any results at all. There will be results. God's word has power when it is spoken clearly without watering it down. Those preachers who, who water down the word of God because they're afraid to offend someone are also watering down the word of God and it won't bless anyone. So you don't bless anyone. You don't offend anyone. You just preach and teach a lukewarm message that does absolutely no good. 
And then no wonder they go chasing after psychology and psychotherapy and counseling all the time. Well, of course, the word of God isn't sufficient for those jokers. They don't even proclaim it. They can't do any good. Unless it's proclaimed clearly. But God's word has power when it's spoken with clarity. It always accomplishes something. It's not always good. Because some people reject it, then it's not going to be good for them. But it'll accomplish something. Blessing for those who receive it. And warning. And if that warning's not heeded, trouble for those who reject it. But it never comes back empty. It's that powerful. I love it. 12. For ye shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. The Israelites were leaving their life of slavery because they had turned back to God, and the punishment is over. It was a great time of happiness for everyone. Repentance always leads to happiness. The hard part is for people to get to the point where they will look at God and cry uncle and say, that's it, I give. I'll do it your way. I know some people whose lives are an absolute mess and so do you. They're an absolute mess. They are suffering horribly and they're bringing it all on themselves because they refuse to repent of their sin and they're living an ungodly life and it's one bad thing after another. God is trying to get through to them. And uh, they just won't call, cry uncle. But if they do, if they do, everything changes. 13. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree, and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree, and it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign, that shall not be cut off. God reverses the curse of sin whenever a person repents. He promises, and he promises to make up for the years that the locusts have eaten. Locusts speaking of judgment. He promises to make up for those years. Because you know why? Because God does not hold a grudge. One reason he punishes people is so that he can bless them after they repent. He has no desire to hold a grudge and continue with bad things in their life. That's not the kind of God that God is. He loves to do good things for people. Well, we're going to stop here and we'll pick it up in chapter 56 next time. And uh, in the meantime, of course, Continue studying the Word of God with me at the BibleVerseByVerse.com. Also, if you want to be a part of this ministry, please remember, you can be. It's totally up to you. Scripture verse by verse, as I mentioned earlier, has been around for over 33 years. And it has always been and continues to be a listener-supported ministry. Which means you can support it. You can be a part of it with your prayers and your financial support. Listeners supported because I've never been underwritten by a large church or denomination and I never will be. I teach the Word of God and that remnant of people who love God's Word, who are blessed by it, will, when moved by the Holy Spirit, pray for me, pray for the Word of God, and also when you take a break from studying at thebibleversebyverse.com, Consider prayerfully clicking that donate button at the top of the front page and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. Okay, see you next time. Can't wait. Isaiah 56. So long.